Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Brigade. I am Brian, and today we're diving back into Kickstarter and GameFound with the Skip or Back segment. This is a bi weekly segment where we kind of talk about games that I'm interested in that are on Kickstarter or if I'm backing or skipping this campaign and for whatever reason that might be. might be. So if this is interesting to you, maybe it helps you uh, with my, my, like my thoughts in terms of how are campaigns farming out, what am I looking for when I'm backing them, this is for you. So without further ado, let's dive right into the first campaign. Okay, Age of Rome, I backed this and I've reviewed this and I've done an unboxing video and we did a giveaway. I really enjoyed Age of Rome. By the time this goes live, unfortunately, the campaign will be over, but lay pledges will still be available, but they're crushing it. $172,000 of their $20,000 goal. Definitely solid work, and they have finally unlocked all of their stretch goals. So what is Age of Rome? Well, it's a tile-laying game where the board in the middle here will be rotating, so your worker placement locations uh, are going to be shifting up from round to round, creating an interesting dynamic between all of the players I really enjoyed this gameplay and uh, I want to add it to my collection so we are going to be doing that now the biggest thing with this one uh, and the thing I tell people is this is a gateway next level so you have gateway games those are games that I use to introduce people to the hobby they're usually lighter uh, in games that I think people will start to understand modern board gaming gateway next is the next tier where you're trying to introduce more mechanics mechanisms but still light enough that they're able to grasp it so i don't really want too many of these type of games in my collection it's a very narrow niche but i like rome i enjoyed the way this played in my collection or i, I mean it plays i enjoy the way it played so i'm definitely going to dive in and pick this one up uh so that's age of rome Okay, so the next game we're looking at is Mercurial. I believe that's how you say it. Not quite sure, not a positive. Uh, but this one I'm not backing at the moment, but I'm saving it uh, because it does intrigue me, but I'm, uh, I need to see more before I pull into it. There's some interesting Kickstarter exclusives with the Deluxe Edition to kind of make it more deluxified. But the gameplay's gotta what grasp me, and that's the problem I'm having with this one. I watched a few gameplay videos from other content creators, and honestly, the gameplay was kind of lacking. It wasn't quite there for me. This game is a dice drafting manipulation game uh, where you're building an engine and comboing off with your spells and abilities uh, as you try to cast some awesome spells. The art looks intriguing. The, the gameplay looks... Eh, I'm not sure. So that's where I'm at. I, I do like the, the slipcovers art. I wish it wasn't a slipcover. I wish it was just a standard box because this cover is not as intriguing to me as, as well. But overall, I'm interested in this one, but I feel like I'm just not sure enough to pull the trigger. Uh, so that's, that's where I'm at. But I'm watching it. I've got it saved. And basically, it's going to be a final day decision for me if I back this one. But I'm leaning more on no. If I was to say I'm 50-50 in which way I'd be te uh, teetering, it's most likely a skip. Wait for retail. Hopefully, I can find a, a deluxe copy at retail, avoid shipping costs. And at that time, I'd also be able to see more reviews, check out board game geek ratings and whatnot. So that's where I'm at with Mercurial. It's close, but I'm not quite there yet. I, I almost wish I could just play it. Maybe I should just play it. Uh, oh, I'm way down on this campaign page. I gotta remember to refresh these. So the next one is for all is Obscure Land, another uh, card game, but this one is a dueling game. And so this one is basically players are going to be uh, casting uh, different types of creatures into uh, birthing pod-like things uh, as they will then birth and enter the battlefield and you're going to attack your opponents it's it's interesting but you know it really feels like a, a game of magic in a way magic the gathering and uh while i i know it's not exactly but it has some similar mechanics you have this tick down thing which is different but you got the battlefield you're trying to eliminate the life total the 20 point life total and you've got creatures here defending or blocking or attacking and whatnot and I, I, I get it. It's not 100% like magic. I'm just saying how my impressions were looking at it. Uh, 
but I'm not totally in love with these clips uh, that hold these cards up. I'm nervous that that would long-term damage my card, but this is how you're ind uh, indicating what is going to be coming out next. And these are dual-sided cards, so they have different effects on which one you decide to cast. Yeah, you have an awakening one, and you have like a birth, like a birthing pod one or something. It looks interesting, but not enough at this point for me to jump in. Um, they, they're trying to, you know, why back now? You get your exclusive content. You get stretch goals, first, first wave. N not a big deal for me. I could care less about that. Saving us some MSRP. MSRP is fake. Uh, experience the campaign. Oh, that's all said and fun. Uh, and help make the game reality. I do believe in that. If it's a game that I want to see, I do believe in making it reality. So why back now though? This is what this is what's holding me up. There's a possibility this comes to retail. I'm not sure. Probably not. If it does, it's going to be go to select stores. Uh, so the gameplay has got to really pull me in for the price. We're looking here at the core pledge. Uh, I don't believe many people are back in the core pledge. We have 48 backers back in the core pledge. It's about $50 that we're looking at, not including shipping. Uh, but the only thing that's kicks our exclusives are in deck boxes. I don't need deck boxes. I've got 100,000 deck boxes. Definitely don't need them. But let's look at the gameplay all in. This is something that's a little bit more uh, weighted out. It's got both 1v1 versus and 2v2, which is a little better because I've got a player group that's up to five players right now. So we need to make sure we have enough to support different types of player counts. Uh, so same thing in this one, though. You know, Basically, you're getting some more expansions, which is good, more, more variety. Uh, but the only thing that's different here, again, no Kickstarter exclusives, just the deck boxes. So that's, that's a little sad. Uh, in terms of that, and then uh, you've got the deluxe bundle all in. This is going to be unlocking a ton of different uh, factions, which is great, again, for more variety, especially with a game like this in terms of a deck construction-like game. Uh, and then you've got these player mats. Um, those are probably going to be nicer than, like, I would like them, but I don't know if I need them. Uh, but you got, yeah, so you got these play mats, which is kind of cool. Uh, you get this card, which is nice. I, I, I think that's good. That's Those are kind of exclusives that, like, intrigue me. Like, that's cool. Kind of sucks that she's only with the deluxe all in. And then a bunch of different sleeves and, again, more deck boxes. Don't really need those deck boxes. So I'm a little leery of backing this one because there's just not incentive right now for me. And when you scroll through these, these stretch goals, nothing here that I saw indicated that they were Kickstarter exclusive except for the deck boxes. So to me, it looks like most likely... Uh, looks like we'll have a potential scoreboard if it hits that unlock that might be Kickstarter exclusive. So majority of the stuff is is retail available if the game goes to retail. And the question is, do you um, do you wait for retail? And I, I feel like I might. Uh, I am interested in this one. I just don't think there's enough incentive for me to warrant the shipping cost. And that's what I'm trying to find next is shipping. So we're, we'd also be looking at the deluxe bundle or the gameplay all-in bundle mostly because we want that 2v2 aspect and i like having in a deck construction game you want a lot of options so i feel like you're gonna need all those expansions so you're looking at the deluxe bundle again that deluxe bundle comes in at 140 dollars it's a good amount but if you're getting a lot of cards of you know wake up for it maybe it's good and we're looking at 20 dollars uh for the usa for the deluxe bundle not too bad I'm glad they got a discount. I believe they got the discount because there was enough backers to get a discount shipping. So that's interesting there. So this is the one I'm watching. Uh, but again, $160. Is it worth it? Is it going to make it to the table enough? I don't know. And I already have a few other uh, battler card games like Radlands that I haven't played yet. So this one's teetering again. Interested, but not quite interested. Dead by Daylight. The board game. I want to love this one. Why don't I love this one? This one should be cool. I'm a video gamer. I am a big time gamer. Although I've never played Dead by Daylight. Uh, but I got the idea of it. I watched Twitch streams. I've watched uh, you know a lot of PlayStation gameplay for it. On YouTube I've watched gameplay. Effectively... Uh, Players are uh, the four, the the heroes, the 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 survivors are trying to escape a hunter who's tracking them mercilessly, and they have to get to different types of uh, equipment to escape. And the, and the right here's the hook, which the uh, killer tries to hook people up onto, and then sometimes heroes can come and rescue them. I like the concept. The board is absolutely atrocious in my mind. I am not 
drawn in by this board. And effectively, what this board is showing you is you got a bunch of different locations indicated by these boxes. And these lines are telling you what action cards you can use to move from one location to another location. So for example, if I'm up in this upper box, I can use the yellow crawl card to crawl down here, or I can use this yellow shifty man to come down here, or I can uh, do some jujitsu and go up there. I mean, it's 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 not intriguing. I, I watched Quackalope's uh, video of this one, and I was not impressed with the gameplay. It looks really light, really light. And the, f the reality is, is that uh, Death Bay, um, Dead by Daylight, the fun of it, the, the anxiety you get from playing that game is because of the game and like getting hunted. And I don't think the board game emulates that at all. They're, they're taking the IP and they're slapping on this game and it just doesn't feel like it really works for me. So I'm, I'm definitely out on this one. I think this one is the biggest bamboozle I've seen in a while in terms of an IP port. Uh, so I'm surprised it's pulling in 8,000. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm the, uh, the, the, the oddity, you know, I love to hear in the comment section down below how wrong I am. So Aldara, this is one that I, uh, I'm going to click remind me on this one because I still want to watch it. Aldara is interesting. Forex, airship, battler, where you're freaking duking it out on a large uh, map. Uh, it seems intriguing. It's a game that definitely fits what I would love to play. In fact, I'm a little sad that I don't get the large minis. And what I'm referring to is Aldara has canceled and come back to Kickstarter. They canceled because they originally had large airships, really dominated the field, made it really look epic uh, in terms of scale. But what it did is it also increased the cost. It made it just so incredibly expensive uh, for people to get the base game, uh, kind of pushed a lot of people out of the space. So they said, okay, we'll cancel. We'll come back with more manageable miniatures. Plus, it looks a little better on the board, I think, in terms of like usability and gameplay ability. Uh, but still, the, the epic miniatures are are gone, and I kind of I'm jealous of the content creators who got preview copies with the large miniatures. Those are definitely going to be sweet to have in their collection. So what I'm uh, hesitant on, the reason I'm not backing, and there's some great comments uh, in the in the comment section that really outlined it, is that the game still has revelin, revel, uh, resemblance of a prototype or early development game. Maybe they've got time to develop this after the campaign, after they get their funds, and now they're, okay, let's dive into this and, and work on it. That might happen. But do I want to wait two years for this game to deliver? That's my fear. How much time do we want to give to Arcane Minis to hold on to my money to develop this game and maybe they don't redevelop and maybe kind of get shipped out and feeling kind of like a prototype. These explore tokens, which are parts of the map where you can explore, they stay on the board, looks cluttered, looks awful, don't like it. Uh, these little towers are a little uh, not as imposing. I don't know. The gameplay looks cool. I think it would be fun. I think this would be a, gun, a good game to play with my, fun, my friends. Uh, but I'm just not sold yet, especially when the cost that I'd be looking at for this one is 235 for the Aldara All-In. And this gets you, I believe, for the six players, which is what I'd need for my five-player group. Um, the other thing that I am also interested in is their shipping costs. They've got a lot of stuff going on here, too. They've got a lot of... Um, if you have a 3D printer, they've got a lot of options for people with 3D printers. But the all-in here is $45. So that's a significant cost. We're looking at $235 plus that $45. It's a significant cost. So is you know $280 worth this game? That's a lot of game. Uh, I was hoping I could maybe pick this up from a local store at some point. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. So I'm not probably going to get Aldara. And that one is mostly because of the price point still for what I want. Isn't equating to the amount of content and the refinement that I feel like needs to have a nearly $300 game. So we're passing on Aldara. Escape from Stalingrad Z. This is one we talked about with the King of Average uh, uh, 
collab video we just did this week. If you haven't seen it, check out King of Averages uh, content this week. It's uh, a news video. We talked about Escape from Stalingrad, and I am initially was it was intrigued by this one it's an interesting campaign narrative campaign story where you are going to be playing as a soldier in a war-torn uh zone which is going to be overtaken by the undead sounds cool what i'm nervous about um is the the way they're selling the game as i'm scrolling through the campaign you're seeing a lot of miniatures. You're seeing a lot of uh, blood and gore and stuff, you know. But at the core of this game, it's a narrative campaign game. Is there going to be enough story to make me want to play 15, 20, 30 hours or 40 hours of this campaign as I try to escape the city? They They don't focus at all on the narrative campaign. It's just... Check out the gore, check out the minis, check out the zombies. Look at all the zombies you get. You get this bonus guy, isn't he cool? Look at this war box you're going to get. You know, look at all this, you know, and look at all the more stuff you can buy. Look at all the stuff you can buy. Look at our miniatures. Look at this guy. He's great. Where don't you don't you want to buy more miniatures and look at our prototype box. This is awful design. Awful design. Uh but what I'm not seeing is here's what the game's going to be like. Here's here's how we're going to write the story. Who's who's going to help uh, create the world? And I've got so many campaign games. If you're not delivering top tier content or at least per- giving me an, uh, an effort that you're showing uh, at least uh, some resemblance of uh, high school level uh, writing or better, you know, because there's a lot of games, guys, that are campaign games that are really poorly written, and I don't want to pay for it. So I, I thought this could be cool, but as I dove through the campaign, I just don't see it. So we're backing off on that one. And that's, again, back or skip. It's like 90% skips at this point because we got we got to be wowed. Things aren't wowing us as much as they used to. So Maglev, Metro, Mex, Monorails, and more. I really want to play Maglev, Metro. I uh, I would love to play this game. I'd love to review it for the channel. Uh, I've really liked Brezier Games' previous titles. Uh, I think I have uh, Whistle Mountain was the last one I reviewed for him. Really enjoyed that one. Maglev came out around the same time. And so I am interested in this campaign. And I would probably back this campaign. I'm going to show you the two reasons as to why I'm not backing it. One, actually maybe three, let's be real with the first one. One, I've not played Maglev Metro, so it's hard for me to justify buying a whole deluxified, all these components without playing it. I can easily get Maglev Metro at retail, so I should probably play that first. See, does this make sense? Does it in, does it work? And then I would look at this campaign. But the reason why, even at that point, even if I love Maglev Metro... I probably still not back it, and it's right here. Will this go to retail? Maglev Metro is currently unavailable in retail, and uh, is currently available in retail. And Maglev Maps Volume One will go to refit retail after fulfillment is complete. Individual expansions, pledge levels one through three, will not go to retail. Okay, so one through three will not go to retail, but Maglev Maps Volume One will. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that is. So if we scroll down here, we can take a look. We've got all these different maps. They're showing pledge level one, you know, pledge level two. These are what not are not going to go to retail. These are the individual maps. We have all you know Mars, the the Max, and, you know, whatever. And then uh, that's about it. Okay. And then we get down to shipping. And you're like, oh, okay. So we have to scroll right here. And you have to kind of see where is it. So right there, maps, Maglev Maps Volume 1. That's what they're referring will go to retail. All three expansions in a luxury box plus 104 screen printed passengers. The thing that I would back of this campaign, the thing that makes it most exciting, the deluxified components, the luxury box is going to retail. So it doesn't make sense that I would back this on Kickstarter. 
And on top of that, paying uh, $21 in shipping for the Maglev Maps Volume 1 when I can just pick it up at retail for 80 So unfortunately, with the cost of shipping and that the only option that is going to retail is the one that I would back is going to keep me from backing it. Uh, so that's Maglev Metro. But really, I got to play the game first. I really got to see if it's for me. The next, The Dark Quarter, a cooperative narrative game exploring the dark quarter of 1980 New Orleans. Uh, I've done a review of this one, and I've done a should you back of this one. If you haven't seen them, I recommend checking out the channel. Really good videos, diving deep into the dark quarter, giving you some more in-depth information. Uh, I really enjoyed my play of Dark Quarter. There's aspects of Dark Quarter that um, intrigue me quite a bit, and I've really enjoyed the, the way... Lucky Duck has created this system. In fact, I didn't even realize on this campaign page, but they used one of my quotes, which is awesome because I didn't notice it. A great example of what possibilities there are still left to explore in the game board game space. What did I mean by that? Well, when I played Destinies specifically, which uses this system, I, I was so in awe of like, man, you could take this system and you could put it anywhere. And I still believe by that. They have created a really cool way of creating narrative experiences with this system they've built with the Destinies and now Dark Quarter. Uh, I definitely am excited to see what else they can do as they expand, as they learn more and more. I definitely want to see what's happening. Um, why am I not backing this one? Well, to be honest with you, it's going to show up at retail at my local store, so I'll pick it up from there. Uh, but the other aspect is it's a little expensive, again, for what I feel like we're getting. And I, I'm pretty positive it's going to be cheaper at retail. So when I'm looking at the cost analysis, is Destinies or is Dark Quarter, why is Destinies? It's because Destinies is on the mind. Is Dark Quarter going to hold its value long term? Is it going to be uh, readily available at retail locations? I believe uh, that Destinies has been harder to sell for a lot of people. I still see it in retail stores. I still see the whole bundle available. And so it makes me a little nervous spending a lot of money on a pledge that might not hold its value for me if it's not, if I'm done with it. Especially a game like Dark Quarter, just like Destinies, the replayability, at least for myself, I mean, my, my family, because I played this with my wife, uh, it, it, once we were done, we were done. We, okay, we experienced the campaign, we experienced the whole story. Yes, you could play it through, play it through a different character's narrative. You know, now we're gonna play as John, then I'm gonna play as Paris. Yes, you could do that. Um, but you still have experienced majority of the story. The question is, and this will be determined with a bunch of reviewers, uh, is how much shifting of the narrative, how much divergent paths are there going to be in the story? They do claim that they're going to have uh, like 30,000 words per chapter or something, just an absurd amount of words, which is, a, which is good, which means there's potential for divergency. So I'm going to be packing, I'm going to be picking this up at retail. Uh, not backing it right now, um, but I, but I was close to backing. This was very close. Uh, to give you my rundown from the should you back, I basically said I, I don't think you need the the minis. I don't think you need any of the anything. And just the core box is probably fine. Uh, with the core box for sixty dollars, you also get the uh, free expansion, which is basically a prequel. So I'd pick that up if you're interested. Excuse me. The last one we're gonna check out is Last Light, and this is one that I was really interested in checking out when Gray Fox Game launched this. Um, they're at one hundred eighty-six thousand dollars, and this one is on Game Found. And Last Light, I actually didn't know anything about this campaign when I uh, saw the advertisements for it. But what I saw was incredibly cool art design for the cover. Really reminded me of Destiny. The uh, It's funny, we just talked about Destinies. Now we're talking about Destiny, the video game. This looked very much like what the, uh, the Guardians have and the Speaker. So I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. Uh, but what... Kind of looks kind of cheesy. Let's turn this down. Blow your speakers out. I don't know if I have that sound on. So the idea is you're going to be playing a 4X space game, which is right up my alley. Uh, and you're going to be exploring this galaxy. Uh, and the board rotates 
just like Age of Rome, which is kind of cool, which means that uh, things can be completely randomized and things are going to be different. I thought that was cool, but uh, I'm not sure I'm totally sold on the gameplay 100%. It does look a little, a little cheap to me. I'm not sure. And Gray Fox Games, as much as they're trying their best to um, be like solid, they're Tasasuka Yumi Full. I never can pronounce that. That's a thing on the channel. Full Moon Down was a disappointment in terms of the quality of the miniatures, quality of the components, quality of the rule book, quality of the campaign, quality of the delivery. I mean, there was like down. Uh, Tortuga supposedly had issues. I actually have yet to open my copy. My Kickstarter copy is still sitting on my shelf sealed. Uh, and After Empire, still taking a while to deliver. They should have delivered by now. I believe they're just struggling finding a boat. But that was the exact same issue they had with Sasuke Yumi. Like, they didn't learn with this one about the shipping crisis. Like, so what's going on with After Empire? They're still struggling. They're still being bumped and bumped and bumped. And that might not be on Gray Fox Games. But I've already taken this road trip three times now, uh, and I'm not sure I'm ready to take that road trip again with them um, down the uncertainty hole of what kind of quality game am I going to get. And I basically said this with, with the last game, and this is why I'm not backing Gray Fox's games currently, is I, uh, what did I do here? Uh, I basically said with After the Empire that this was their last attempt to, to prove me wrong, show me that they can make a game with quality components in a solid system uh, with, with solid rules. And once they've done that, then I'll consider backing their campaigns again. So unfortunately, Last Light, which hits a lot of things that I would want in a campaign, is not quite there for me because we're still waiting for After the Empire. But if After the Empire shows up and it's a solid game, we're back in business, Gray Fox. I, I'm on your side again. Just got to prove me right, you know, prove me wrong, whatever you want to call it. So that is it. I I hope the messy hair don't care look that I had, you know, before I started recording this, I was like, man, your hair is wild. Should I change it? But I thought, you know what? I kind of look like Matthew McConaughey, you know, I feel like I'm looking good. I'm looking like we're ready to film at three in the morning, which is right now 3 a.m. So probably why I need to get, the, get some sleep. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. This is the back or skip segment. Again, uh, right now we're backing Age of Rome. We're skipping on Mercurial. We're skipping on Feralis. Skipping on Dead for Daylight. We're, we're saving Aldara for later. Uh, we're skipping Escape from Stalingrad. We are skipping Maglev uh, because it's going to be better at retail. We're skipping Dark Quarter for retail. Skipping Gray Fox Game because it's Gray Fox Games and I need to see that they are going to prove me wrong and, and deliver quality content. If this is good for you, if you like this content, this honest, uh, let's talk about campaigns in a deeper manner, click the subscribe button, help the community out by also hitting the thumbs up. If you want to join the community, have some conversations with me and others in the community, check out the discord down below. We have a ton of fun talking about Kickstarters, weight loss, general, sharing our pictures, talking about whatever. I would love to have you guys join the community. We are needing you there. Uh, without that, I'm going to go and call it. The next video we're going to be posting is the vlog. So take out the vlog. It'll be on Sunday. You know, the vlog behind the scenes, guys, the vlog causes at least three people to unsubscribe each time I posted it. So either people hate seeing me or what's going on. I don't know. Why are you guys end up subscribing from the vlog? I need to know. I am rambling. I'm going to end this. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.